railroad tunnels have a certain aura about them. More often than not, you can't see where they lead to as the tracks disappear into a void of darkness. And if one were so curious as to explore this void, they could be met with a gruesome fate. Tucked within the Hoosick range of the Green Mountains is the Hoosick Tunnel, a portal riddled with bad luck, political opposition, and death. In March 1845, the Fitchburg Railroad was opened, running from Boston, Massachusetts to Greenfield. Its president, paper mill owner and railroad advocate, Alva Crocker, wanted a more northerly route to serve his mills in isolated mountain towns. While satisfied with its completion, one thing stood in his way from expanding west. Crocker remarked, But it is a pity that the finger of Providence hadn't been thrust through the Hoosick Mountain. Thus, the Troy and Greenfield Railroad was chartered in 1848 to link Greenfield, Massachusetts and Troy, New York. On January 8, 1851, construction of a 4.75 mile tunnel through the Hoosack Mountain began on the west side of North Adams. In the summer of 1852, a second crew on the east side began digging west to meet the other crew in the middle. A device known as Wilson's Patented Stone Cutting Machine was to be employed to speed up progress, but it got stuck after 12 feet during a test drill away from the tunnel site. You can still see the hole today. Instead, they would use a star drill in black powder. After two feet of drilling, the hole would be filled with powder for blasting. In 1856, ownership of the Troy and Greenfield Railroad in the Hoosick Tunnel was shifted to Pennsylvania Railroad engineer Herman Haupt. As time went on, digging the tunnel was proving to be extremely tedious, and it was marred by a myriad of issues. Water and crumbling rocks greatly slowed down progress and required six to eight layers of bricks to line the tunnel interior. Layers of hard rock were tough to blast through. There were faulty machines. And opposition from the Western Railroad and state governor greatly hindered the project. Haupt abandoned the project in 1861 and focused on building railroads for the Union Army during the Civil War, leaving progress at a standstill. The Troy and Greenfield Railroad defaulted on a mortgage in 1862, and the state of Massachusetts then took control of the Hoosick Tunnel. A state-sponsored study then revealed a few things. Much of the work would have to be redone due to not following engineering standards, a compressed air drill and more powerful explosives would be required to proceed, and both portals would have to be widened to fit two tracks. In July 1863, Thomas Doan was named chief engineer and construction resumed. New burly drills were employed and six alignment towers were built to ensure crews would meet up in the middle. Progress moved along at 80 to 100 feet per month, but not without a serious cost to life. The worst incident occurred on October 17, 1867. Thirteen men were working at the bottom of the central shaft. Suddenly, a candle in the shaft hoist ignited leaking naphtha fumes from a gasometer lamp. The fiery explosion sent the hoist down the 583 foot deep shaft and all 13 workers died from falling debris or suffocation. A worker was sent down the shaft to search for bodies, and when he was overwhelmed by fumes, they raised him back up and he simply said, no hope. The tunnel then became known as the Bloody Pit. Adding on to these deaths were falling rocks and accidents with ladders. The use of nitroglycerin and electric detonators in blasting was another major death bringer. These technologies were still new and resulted in several premature detonations. Work had to continue though. The tunnel was nearing completion by the 1870s, but not before floodwaters filled the west portal and the brick lining had to be replaced. Blasting was completed in November 1873, and after 24 years of construction, the first train passed through on February 9th, 1875. At the time, the 4.7 mile long tunnel was the second longest in the world and the longest in North America. The final cost was around $20 million with 195 workers injured and 135 killed. Now let's do a quick lightning round of history to get us up to today. Ownership of the line was sold to the Fitchburg Railroad in 1877 then to the Boston and Maine in 1900. The tunnel was electrified in 1910 to reduce poor visibility from smoky steam locomotives. The U.S. Army positioned guards at Hoosick Tunnel after the U.S. entered World War I in 1917, viewing it as a major rail link. Electrification was removed in favor of diesel power in 1947. It was single-tracked in 1957. 
the Boston and Maine became part of Pan Am Railways in 1983, clearances were increased in 1997 and 2007 to allow auto racks and trailer on flat cars to pass through, the tunnel collapsed a few times in February 2020, CSX bought out Pan Am Railways in 2022, and now Berkshire and Eastern operates the line as of 2023. The line still sees a good few freight trains and it's even hosted a few excursions. However, trains aren't the only thing running through the tunnel according to several reports. As early as 1865, there were supposed paranormal activities happening from within. One of these included a Ringo Kelly prematurely setting off a blast charge, killing two of his co-workers as they were buried in rocks. Kelly wasn't seen again until a year later in March 1866 when his dead body was found inside the tunnel, appearing to be strangled to death sometime in the early morning. The case had no suspects and it was never solved. Some workers thought it was the spirits of Kelly's co-workers who had come back to get revenge. After the central shaft incident in 1867, nearby residents claimed to see some strange shapes and heard wailing from the now flooded shaft. Workers also claimed to see the lost men carrying their picks and shovels through the mist and snow at the top of Husik Mountain. They tried calling out to them, but received no reply, and there were no footprints found in the snow. These sightings were said to have stopped after the recovered bodies were given a proper burial. With the death toll rising, the increasingly frustrated and paranoid workers spoke of hearing a man's voice groaning in pain throughout the tunnel. Some of them refused to enter the tunnel after dark because of this. Paul Travers, a mechanical engineer on the tunnel, and a former Union Army cavalry officer known as Mr. Dunn investigated the noise. On September 7, 1868, they went into the tunnel at 9pm and walked for about 2 miles. Both men claimed to hear the sound of a man in pain, a sound that they were both familiar with having fought in the Civil War. Travers wrote to his sister about the incident saying, I'll admit, I haven't been this frightened since Shiloh. On the night of June 25, 1872, a Dr. Clifford J. Owens and Drilling Operations Superintendent James R. McKinstry visited the tunnel. Around 11.30 when walking through the portal, they heard the voice of someone in pain and saw a floating blue light in the shape of a headless human. McKinstry said it got so close that he could have touched it had he not been frozen in fear. He says the temperature dropped and felt an icy cold chill up his spine. The figure then floated east and disappeared. Dr. Owens explained his story to a Michigan newspaper saying, I am above all a realist nor am I prone to repeating gossip and wild tales that defy a reasonable explanation. However, in all truth, I cannot deny what James McKinstry and I witnessed with our own eyes. On October 16, 1874, a local hunter by the name of Frank Webster vanished. Three days later, he was found stumbling near the Deerfield River in shock. He claimed some voices ordered him into the tunnel, when all of a sudden he saw some ghostly figures, then something stole his rifle and beat him over the head with it. He told the search party he couldn't remember leaving the tunnel. A series of train crashes resulting in deaths, people disappearing after walking through the tunnel, and even suicides would happen throughout the late 1800s and early 1900s, adding to the tunnel's infamous nature. Several decades later on October 30th, 1977, Joseph Impoco, a former employee for the Boston and Maine Railroad, was interviewed regarding his experience with the haunted tunnel for the Berkshire Sampler newspaper. One day, while he was chipping away at some ice on the tracks, he heard a voice shout out, Run, Joe, run! Impoco said, I turned and sure enough there was number 60 coming at me. Boy, did I jump back fast. When I looked, there was no one there. He said there was a man with a torch that waved and passed by, but paid no attention to him. About a month later, he was using a crowbar to clear ice from some freight cars when a voice called out, Joe! Joe! Drop it, Joe! He dropped the crowbar and then 11,000 volts of electricity from a short-circuited line sent the tool flying onto the ground. Another time he was clearing out trays from the tunnel entrance when one nearby fell towards him. He managed to dodge it, but he heard an unearthly laugh. Not something he would have heard from one of his co-workers, that's for sure. Impoco would leave his railroad job and move away, but he visited the Husik Tunnel every year, believing tragedy would strike him if he didn't, to thank the ghost or voice that saved him back in the 1930s. One year, Impoco stayed home with his sick wife who believed his superstition was a bunch of bunk. 
she ended up passing away soon thereafter. Even in today's modern age, there are still reports of ghostly figures and strange noises around the tunnel. How many of these stories are true, exaggerated, or fabricated isn't really known for sure. That's for you to decide. The Hoosick Tunnel, simply put, has an infamous history. Its construction was plagued by bad luck, opposition, and over a hundred deaths. In its wake, it left a tunnel full of supposed hauntings. Knowing all of this, there's certainly no doubt of an ominous atmosphere surrounding this 1850s era tunnel. Happy Halloween! I hope you enjoyed this more spooky themed video along with the other one I did about the disappearance of Lou. This should go without saying, but I'm gonna include it anyway, but don't try to explore the Hoosick Tunnel. It's an active railroad line, it's illegal, and getting squashed by a train is probably gonna ruin anyone's day. But anyway, I want to thank my channel members and give a special thanks to Evans H.O.N.N. Productions, Grand Canyon Studios, Tommy Rosini, and Mooter for subscribing to the Conductor tier. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, happy Halloween, and I'll see you in another video.